Hello, dear spiritual listeners. In the 8th chapter, titled, Enlightened Relationship, Tall explores how timeless wisdom can enhance connections between men and women, as well as in broader social interactions. Many people pursue physical pleasures or psychological satisfaction, assuming, that, these will bring happiness or alleviate fear and lack. True salvation is being free from fear, suffering, perceived lack, and insufficiency. It means letting go of desires, needs, grasping, and clinging. Salvation is freedom from compulsive thinking, negativity, and the psychological need for the past and future. Discovering God happens when you realize you don't need to actively seek God. Feeling lonely without a partner? Embrace the present moment. In a relationship, bring yourself into the now from there. If you don't tune into the present moment's consciousness frequency, all relationships, especially intimate ones, have significant flaws and end up dysfunctional. Even if they seem perfect during the in love phase, disruptions like arguments, conflicts, dissatisfaction, and even violence become more frequent. The belief that removing negative cycles would make the relationship flourish. But, it's not true. I'm talking about romantic relationships, not true love. True love, which has no opposite because it comes from beyond the mind. Continuous love is still rare among conscious human beings. However, fleeting glimpses of love are possible whenever there's a gap in the constant stream of thoughts. The negative aspects of a relationship include possessiveness, jealousy, control, withdrawal, unspoken resentment, the need to be right, insensitivity, self-absorption, emotional demands, and manipulation. There's also the urge to argue, criticize, judge, blame, or attack, as well as anger, unconscious revenge for past pain from a parent, rage, and physical violence. On the positive side, being in love with your partner initially feels deeply satisfying. It brings a heightened sense of aliveness, and life becomes meaningful because someone needs and wants you, making you feel special. However, this intense connection can turn into addiction. Your partner acts like a drug, and when the drug is available, you are on a high. Yet, the mere possibility or thought of losing them can trigger jealousy, possessiveness, emotional manipulation, blame, accusations, and fear of loss. Just think, can love transform into its opposite in a moment? Was it genuine love from the start, or just an addictive grasping and clinging? Let's delve deeper into understanding our inclination toward romantic relationships and the quest for completeness. The intense and widely pursued experience of romantic love seems promising because it appears to offer freedom from an inherent state of fear, neediness, lack, and incompleteness that characterizes the human condition in its unredeemed and unenlightened state. The root of this physical longing is a spiritual one, a desire to transcend duality and return to a state of wholeness. Sexual relationship is the closest approximation of this state on the physical level, making it the most profoundly satisfying experience in the material realm. However, it's crucial to recognize that sexual pleasure provides only a fleeting glimpse of wholeness, a momentary sense of bliss. When sought as a subconscious means of salvation, it becomes a quest to end duality on the level of form, where it cannot be attained. On the psychological level, the feeling of lack and incompleteness is even more pronounced than on the physical plane. The ego, a false, mind-created self, constantly seeks new identifications to counteract its vulnerability and insecurity, perpetually yearning for a sense of existence. Then, along comes that special relationship, seemingly the solution to all the ego's problems and needs. Initially, it appears to overshadow all other sources from which you derive your sense of self. Your previous identifications become less significant, replaced by a single focal point that gives meaning to your life and defines your identity, the person you are, in love, with. At first glance, it seems that the underlying feelings of incompleteness, fear, lack, and unfulfillment, typical of the EGOIC state, have disappeared. But have they truly dissolved, or do they linger beneath the surface of the seemingly happy reality? If your relationships involve both moments of love, and its opposite, attacks, emotional violence, and the like, there's a likelihood that you're confusing ego attachment and addictive clinging with genuine love. True love has no opposite, it doesn't fluctuate between love and attack. As your partner's behavior fails to meet the needs of your ego, feelings of fear and pain may resurface. When these painful emotions reappear, they intensify, and your partner may be perceived as the cause. 
Every addiction, whether to substances like alcohol or drugs, or to a person, begins with pain and ends with pain. Whatever the substance or person, it becomes a cover-up for your pain. Consequently, after the initial euphoria fades, intimate relationships often harbor unhappiness and pain, not because they cause it, but because they bring to the surface the pain and unhappiness already within you. To transform an addicted relationship into a true and liberated one, whether you are living alone or with a partner, the key lies in the strength of your presence. For love to thrive, your presence should be powerful enough to prevent the thinker or the pain body from taking over, so you no longer mistake them for your true self. It starts with ceasing judgment of yourself, followed by refraining from judging your partner. The most potent catalyst for change in a relationship is wholehearted acceptance of your partner as they are, without any urge to judge or change them. This step immediately transcends the ego. Love is a state of being, and your love resides deep within you. It's not external, nor can it be lost. It doesn't depend on another body or external form. Love is not selective, it's akin to the impartial light of the sun. It doesn't make one person special or exclusive. The intensity of true love can vary, and there might be someone who reflects that love back to you more clearly and intensely than others. If this mutual feeling exists, it can be described as a love relationship. These moments often occur when both your and your partner's minds briefly quiet down, and the pain body is in a dormant state. This might happen during physical intimacy, witnessing childbirth, facing death, or when one of you is seriously ill, situations that render the mind powerless. However, as soon as the mind and its identifications return, you cease to be yourself and become a human mind again. While brief glimpses of this state are possible, love cannot truly flourish unless you are permanently free from mind identification, and your presence remains intense enough. As the EGOIC consciousness and the structures it created face a final collapse, millions find themselves living alone or as single parents. Others move from one relationship to another, cycling through pleasure and pain. Some continue dysfunctional relationships for the sake of children or security. However, every crisis brings both danger and opportunity. If relationships amplify EGOIC mind patterns and activate the pain body, as is happening now, why not face this reality instead of trying to escape it? The hidden opportunity in every crisis only reveals itself when all aspects of a situation are acknowledged and fully accepted. When you recognize that you are not at peace, your awareness creates a still space that envelops your unrest in a loving embrace, transforming it into peace. Embrace moments when your relationship isn't working, when it brings out the madness in both you and your partner. This signals that what was once unconscious is now emerging into the light, an opportunity for salvation. In each moment, be aware, especially of your inner state. Acknowledge and hold the reality of your emotions, whether it's anger, jealousy, defensiveness, the urge to argue, the need to be right, or any emotional pain. Let the relationship become your spiritual practice. If you react to your partner's unconsciousness, you also become unconscious. However, if you remember to be aware of your reaction, nothing is lost. Accept that the relationship is here to make you conscious, not necessarily happy, and it will offer you salvation. You don't have to wait for your partner to cooperate or for the world to become sane before you attain enlightenment. The moment you engage in arguments, the ego takes charge, and you become unconscious. If necessary, you can point out aspects of your partner's behavior with alertness and presence, doing so without ego involvement, without blaming, accusing, or making the other wrong. When your partner acts unconsciously, let go of all judgment. Judging confuses someone's unconscious behavior with their true self or projects your own unconsciousness onto them, mistaking that for who they are. Relinquishing judgment doesn't mean ignoring dysfunction and unconsciousness, it means embodying the role of the knowing, rather than being reactive or judgmental. In this state, you are either completely free from reaction or may still react while maintaining the role of the knowing, the space where the reaction is observed and allowed to be. Instead of battling darkness, you introduce light. Rather than reacting to delusion, you acknowledge the delusion but see through it. Being the knowing creates a clear space of loving presence that accepts all things and people as they are. There's no greater catalyst for transformation. If you consistently practice this, your partner cannot remain unconscious while being with you. If both of you agree that the relationship is a spiritual practice, that's even better.
Express your thoughts and feelings to each other as they arise, avoiding time gaps where unexpressed emotions or grievances can fester. Share without blaming and learn to listen openly to your partner, giving them space to express themselves. Be present without engaging in accusing, defending, or attacking. Patterns designed to strengthen the ego or meet its needs become unnecessary. Granting space to others is crucial for love to flourish. Once you've eliminated the destructive factors in relationships, transmuting the pain body, disidentifying from the mind and mental positions, and if your partner has done the same, you'll experience the bliss of a flourishing relationship. Instead of reflecting each other's pain in unconsciousness or satisfying addictive ego needs, you'll mirror back the love that resides deep within, the love that comes with the realization of your oneness with all that is. This love has no opposite. If your partner is still caught up in their thoughts and emotional pain, while you have found freedom, it can be a big challenge, for your partner, not for you. Living with someone who is enlightened isn't easy because the ego feels threatened. The ego thrives on problems, conflicts, and having enemies to strengthen its sense of separateness. Your unenlightened partner may feel frustrated because their fixed beliefs aren't being challenged. Without resistance, these beliefs become shaky, and there's a risk they might collapse, leading to a loss of self. The pain body craves feedback and stimulation, but it's not getting what it needs in the form of arguments, drama, and conflict. However, be cautious, some people who seem unresponsive, withdrawn, insensitive, or emotionally disconnected may falsely claim to be enlightened. They might even blame everything on their partner. This tendency is more common in men, who may perceive their female partners as irrational or overly emotional. If you can connect with your emotions, you're not far from accessing your radiant inner self. On the other hand, if you're mainly stuck in your thoughts, the distance is greater. To bridge this gap, you need to bring awareness into your emotional experiences before reaching your inner self. True enlightenment is characterized by an overflow of love, joy, complete presence, and openness to all beings. Another sign is how a person reacts in tough situations or when things go wrong. If someone claims to be enlightened but is actually wrapped up in egotistical self-deception, life will inevitably present challenges that reveal their unconsciousness, manifesting as fear, anger, defensiveness, judgment, or depression. In relationships, many challenges arise, often through one's partner. For instance, a woman may face difficulties with a partner who is mentally absorbed and unresponsive. His lack of presence makes it hard for him to hear her, give her attention, or allow her space to be herself. This absence of love in the relationship, felt more strongly by the woman, triggers her pain body. In response, she may attack her partner through blame, criticism, or making him wrong. Now, this becomes his challenge. To defend himself against her pain body's seemingly unwarranted attacks, he becomes more entrenched in his mental positions, justifying, defending, or counterattacking. This defensive cycle may eventually activate his own pain body. When both partners are consumed by their pain bodies, a profound level of unconsciousness ensues, a state of emotional violence, savage attack, and counterattack. This cycle persists until both pain bodies have replenished themselves, entering a dormant stage until the next occurrence. It's important to recognize that women may be naturally closer to enlightenment than men because they find it easier to feel and be present in their bodies. Many ancient cultures intuitively used female figures or analogies to symbolize the formless and transcendent reality, often depicting it as a womb that gives birth to and sustains all of creation. Women, by embodying the unmanifested, are considered closer to this reality. As human society became more dominated by the mind and lost touch with its divine essence, the concept of God shifted to a male figure. This led to a male-dominated society where women were subordinated. The mind, seeking control, became resistant, manipulative, and domineering. The traditional image of God became a patriarchal, authoritative figure, an often wrathful man to be feared, as suggested in the Old Testament. This God is essentially a projection of the human mind. To transcend the mind and reconnect with the deeper reality of being, different qualities are necessary, qualities such as surrender, non-judgment, openness to life instead of resistance, and the ability to embrace everything with love. These qualities are more closely associated with the female principle. Now, why is the pain body more challenging for women? The pain body has two parts, personal and collective. 
Personal is your own emotional pain from the past. Collective is the pain shared by all humans from things like war, torture, and cruelty over thousands of years. Some races or countries with more violence have a heavier collective pain body. Every woman has a part in the collective female pain body, unless she is fully aware. It's the pain from male dominance, slavery, exploitation, rape, childbirth, and more over thousands of years. The pain can awaken during menstruation, making a woman feel taken over by a powerful force. This force isn't her, it's the pain body speaking, acting, and thinking through her. Realizing you are attached to your pain can be shocking. Once you see this, you break the attachment. The pain body is there because of past events. A victim identity thinks the past controls you, but it's not true. The belief that others are responsible for your emotional pain or who you are now is a victim identity. Some women, even if not victims personally, hold a collective victim identity, saying, what men did to women. It's true, but holding on to it keeps them trapped. Separating from men strengthens the ego and moves you away from your true self. Stay attentive as your menstrual cycle approaches. Fully engage with your body. When the first sign shows up, catch it early by focusing your attention on it. If it's an emotion, sense the strong energy behind it. Stay aware of your presence and its strength. Bringing your presence into any emotion makes it subside. Stay vigilant for the next sign of the pain body. When it appears, catch it in the same way. If your male partner is aware, he can assist you. Even if the pain body affects him, he won't react to it. Whether enlightened or not, as a man or a woman, your form identity is not complete. This sense of incompleteness is experienced as attraction between males and females. In a state of inner connectedness, you feel this pull on the surface of your life, seeing the world as waves on the vast ocean. You are both the ocean and a ripple, recognizing your true identity. This doesn't mean you don't relate deeply to others. In fact, deep connection is only possible when you're conscious of being. Being gay or lesbian makes you different, raising your consciousness. However, identifying solely with your sexual orientation can lead to unhappiness beneath your ego mask. Ultimately, a good relationship with yourself is crucial. If you're uneasy alone, seeking a relationship to cover it up will only bring that unease back in a different form, often blaming your partner. Accepting this moment fully brings ease in the present and with yourself. Do you really need a relationship with yourself? Being yourself without the split into, I, and, myself, eliminates unnecessary complexity and conflict. In enlightenment, the self-reflective consciousness split is healed and there's no need to protect or defend a separate self. When enlightened, the only relationship you no longer have is with yourself, making all your other relationships ones of love.